Meanwhile, in Illinois, six people are confirmed dead after a tornado destroyed this Amazon warehouse. That includes 26-year-old cargo driver Austin McEwen, described by his friends and his co-workers as the light in every room that he walked into. His friend Emily Epperson is also an employee at the Amazon warehouse, but was not at work when the tornado hit, and she joins us right now live. Emily, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing okay. We're all doing okay, uh, but I'm sure you probably said to yourself a million times, I, I could have been in there that night. Yeah, um, I, I definitely could have. I almost picked up a shift because I've had an ankle injury lately, and last minute I didn't. Oh, wow. So tell us what happened. Do you, you have any details? I know you went to the Amazon warehouse when Austin was missing the next day. Tell us what you saw and what you think happened to Austin. Um, I went to the warehouse the very next day at about 13 hours after he was missing. No one had heard from him. Um, his girlfriend was on KSDK. Um, his mother had not heard from him either. She had actually gone to the police station to identify a body once, which I'm sure was so mm -hmm. traumatic. And she actually did it a second time. And that second time, I was at the warehouse with actually one of his best friends that I met there. Mm -hmm. And he got the call after about two hours of me waiting um, to hear anything. You know, you must, the way I, I, it reads, it looks like that building was built pretty sturdy. I mean, the, the walls, they say, that were destroyed were 11 inches thick, concrete, uh, 40 feet tall. There must have been a sense that you were in the right place, correct? Um, well, I wasn't at the warehouse that night. Right. No, I know, but just um, did you get the sense that that was a sturdy building, that you would be safe there? Yes, I did. Um... I did, I did get the sense that I was safe there. And it's just very bizarre and devastating, obviously, um, to think that my friend didn't make it out. Um, I would like to make very clear, actually, that I am really quickly just here to um, honor my best friend, mm -hmm. Austin McEwen. He was my yeah. best work friend. And if I may, I would really like to just say very quickly the names of the other five mm -hmm. victims. Please do. Um, so here in Illinois, it's a devastating tragedy, but I do want to include 28-year-old DeAndre S. Morrow, 62-year-old um, Kevin D. Dickey, 29-year-old Clayton Lynn Cope, 34-year-old Etheria S. Hebb, 46-year-old Larry E. Verdon, and 26-year-old Austin J. McEwen. Wow, yeah. Austin was so, uh, out of that list, most of them are in their 20s, early 30s. It's just so devastating for all of these families, especially a week or two before Christmas. Tell us what Austin was like. What was, I know, we know how it is to have best friends at work. What was he like? Uh, he was one of the most caring and down to earth people that I have ever met. You know, I've had a huge string of jobs, but Amazon, um, you know, we, there's a close knit group of us. There's about four of us in this group that we have. And Austin was, I want to say, the backbone to this group. And it's going to be so different and so devastating without him. I hope I'm doing his family proud right now um, by giving enough details about him. So, Mama McEwen, if you are watching this, I hope that you're proud. Um, he was just, like you said, the light in every single room that he walked into. That is really nice of you to say. Um, a GoFundMe has been set up. The, uh, the goal is $30,000 to help the family with uh, funeral expenses. I'm looking at the site right now. They're up to $21,000, so they're still looking for $9,000 to help this family. Wow. Do. Well, go ahead, Emily. Oh, I just said, please do. Please go, mm -hmm. um, you know, help out and donate anything you can to that GoFundMe. Oh, he looked he so happy in all these pictures. Emily, I, I was reading that he picked up a shift on Friday night and was returning the work van back to the station when the tornado hit. Yes. Um, so that is pretty much, you know, the protocol. Whenever we get done delivering, we bring the work vans back to the station. And um, he was doing that when the tornado hit at right around 8.38 p.m. And the last time anyone heard from him he was a little upset because he was being told to go to the storm shelter that we have 
and he was done for the night. So of course he just wanted to go home. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, he did. He didn't. So he went to the storm shelter. Um, yeah. yes, yes, sir. Yeah, we were told we, that your boss has told you you're not allowed to leave. Is that is that accurate? We were not allowed to leave until everyone was sure that things were safe. Um, myself, of course, I wasn't there, but my dispatcher that I was in contact with the entire time was, and he was confirming that no, they could not leave until they were safe that the building, or sure that the building was safe enough to exit. Yeah. Um, Emily, once again, thank you very much for joining us as we look at the devastation at the, the place where you had worked. I, I don't imagine, it, it's closed now, right? Yes, for um, right now, as far as we know, at least for the next couple of weeks, um, we will know more then, but we are yeah. absolutely closed for, for the time being. Indeed. Uh, once again, if people would like to donate to the GoFundMe page for Austin McEwen, go to foxandfriends.com and we will link to the exact GoFundMe site. Emily, thank you very much for joining us. Emily, we're sorry thank for your you loss. So much. It's, uh, thank you for letting me have the chance to get my friend's story out there. Mm -hmm. You got did it. a good job. Yeah, you did. Thank he you. He was lucky to have you as a friend. All right, Emily, thank you.